Hey Sherlock, I've got a job for you. Are you ready to polish your analytical skills? Great. Here you go. Yeah. Once Lily, a real estate agent, was showing a luxurious apartment to a wealthy family. The family liked everything about the apartment, but for one thing, the place had huge floor-to-ceiling windows, and they were worried someone could accidentally break the glass and fall out. Lily really wanted to sell that expensive apartment. That's why she decided to prove that the glass was unbreakable. She ran up to the window and hit it at full speed. The glass indeed didn't break, but Lily fell out of the window and was rushed to a hospital. How could it happen? The glass didn't break, it simply popped out of its frame. One day, Detective Morris decided to have a walk in the park. In the middle of his stroll, he got a call from his assistant. It turned out that a huge pile of plastic on the outskirts of the city had disappeared overnight. The detective rushed there, and guess what? The information was true. But the most bizarre thing? There were no tire tracks or any other marks around the place. But then, how could the thief transport so much plastic without using a vehicle? Suddenly, Detective Morris noticed some weird footmarks. Can you help the man understand who they belong to? Those are definitely not human footprints. They might belong to an animal or some other creature. The case is getting weirder by the minute. Detective Morris was wandering around the city for hours, looking for clues. Soon, his assistant informed him about the disappearance of yet another pile of plastic. At the crime scene, the detective found the same footmarks. The expert he had asked to examine the photos and samples replied that the footprints didn't match any other in her extensive database. She even suggested that they could belong to... an alien. But why would aliens need our plastic? Morris decided to prevent the next crime. He went to the outskirts of the city again and spotted two piles of garbage. Look at them attentively. Which one might aliens want to steal? They will definitely go for the pile on the left. There's too much stuff made of iron in the right pile, but aliens are after plastic, so pile on the left it is. Detective Morris decided to catch the aliens red-handed. In an hour or so, the man noticed a spaceship landing not far from the piles of trash. An alien climbed out of the spaceship and transported the pile that contained plastic into the ship. Detective Morris was shocked, but there was no time for panicking. A small door was open in the side of the spaceship. He sneaked inside. He only had some time to look around when a siren started blaring. Oh no, are they going to take off? The man rushed back to the door, but it was already locked. Luckily, Morris noticed a math equation on the door. It looked as if it was made out of matchsticks. 5 plus 7 equals 2. But the answer was wrong. By trial and error, the detective understood he could only move one matchstick to make the equation correct. How can he do it? Detective Morris moved this matchstick and got 9 minus 7 equals 2. The door opened and the man ran for his life. But the main question remained unanswered. Why did aliens need our plastic? Write your ideas in the comments below. Now look at these animals on the screen. A cat, a camel, a cheetah, a chicken, a crocodile, and a pig. Which animal doesn't belong here? The pig is the odd one out. It's the only animal whose name doesn't start with the letter C. Did you get it? Nice job! Look at these six glasses. The first three are filled with water, while the other three are empty. How can you arrange them so that they alternate in a full empty full pattern if you can only move one glass? Pick up the second glass and pour the water into the fifth one. Here you go. Now you have seven guests at your birthday party. And your task is to figure out how to divide your very round birthday cake 
into eight equal pieces by making only three cuts. First of all, you need to cut your cake vertically in the middle of the cake to divide it into two equal pieces. Repeat the same process, but this time, make a horizontal cut. Now you've got four slices. And the final third cut should go laterally across the cake. Voila! You've got eight equal slices. Look at these bottom lines and try to figure out which of them is the continuation of the top one. It's this line on the left, see? You've been kidnapped by an insane scientist who's going to test his new protective cream on you. After covering you with this lotion, which you absolutely don't trust, he offers you to choose one of the three containers he'll then throw you in. One of the containers is filled with radioactive waste. In the second container, there is an acid that can eat even through metal. And the third one is filled with lava from the largest volcano on Earth that erupted a year ago. Which container should you choose? Pick the container with lava. If the volcano erupted a year ago, the lava must be already solid. Look at these prisoners. Can you figure out who came from the future? It's the guy in the middle. Unlike the other two men who are dressed like people were in the past, he's wearing modern clothes and cool sneakers. A terrible virus broke free from a laboratory, and now all animals and plants on Earth are mutating at a horrifying speed. Uh oh. You've been trying to find the solution, but instead got trapped in the laboratory where it had all started. There are three doors you can escape through, but behind the first one, there is a bunch of aggressive flesh-eating cacti. The second door hides hundreds of venomous bees, and the third door prevents an attack of fire-spitting dragon-like monsters. Which door can lead you to freedom? You can get out of there alive if you choose the first door. Even though the cacti eat flesh, they're still plants and can't move. So you can easily get around them. You're trapped in a room that's steadily getting filled with water coming from a tap in the wall. There are no windows in the room and the door is blocked. You have a mop and a big bucket. What can you do to survive? Yep, you don't have any options in this riddle, so... Think of your own way to get out of this situation. Your chances to stay alive are much higher than you might think. Just turn off the tap. Nathan came to visit his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got. A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago. Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? King Alfred V ruled the country from 1290 to 1320 before Common Era. If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 before Common Era. A villain has caught you, and now he lets you choose in which cage he will keep you. You can get out of the cage only through the lid in its ceiling. But on top of the first cage, there is a nest of venomous snakes. Boiling water is on top of the second cage. And on top of the third cage, there is a hungry lion. Which cage should you pick to be able to escape when the villain falls asleep? Choose the second cage because the water will eventually evaporate, and you'll get out of the cage without problems. You're locked in a small room without windows and just one door. To get out of there, you need to crack this riddle. 1, 2, 3 equals 5, 3, 2, 1 equals 9, 2, 1, 1 equals 4. 1, 1, 2 equals 3, 1, 3, 2 equals... How fast can you get out of the locked room?
The answer lies in the addition of the second and third digits, and the multiplication of the sum by the first digit. Let's take the first equation. 1, 2, 3 equals 5. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Let's make sure. 3, 2, 1 equals 9. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Then the answer we need is again 5. 3 plus 2 equals 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Now, let's check if you can think outside the box. A few Rebus puzzles will do the job. Yeah. Try to figure out this one. Way. Progress. It means progress underway. How about this one? Noon. Good. It's good afternoon. Pay attention to the arrangement of the letters. C. L. E. A. N. Do you think you can figure it out? It means clean up. What word or phrase can you see here? Give, 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 give. It stands for forgive. Concentrate. I believe you can crack this puzzle. 1N, 3N, 5N, 7N. This rebus hides odds and ends. Try to figure out this one. Stay 4NCE. It's for instance. Great job! Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette, but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still. Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do, but he promised to come back in the evening to figure out the solution. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter was in despair. I drove my sister to the doctor and was away for an hour or so. But when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why? When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. Several gold bullion bars were stolen from a bank. The police had a few suspects. But when they arrived at the main suspect's house, they realized they had forgotten to bring a warrant. The man told them he wasn't going to allow them to search his house. Come back with the warrant and we'll talk. An hour later, the police officers came back with the needed documents. They thoroughly searched the house and the garden, but didn't find the gold. Suddenly, one of the officers exclaimed, I know where he hid the gold. Have you figured it out too? The gold is in the swimming pool. When the police visited the man for the first time, the level of water in it was much lower. A very famous painting disappeared from the museum. Later the police managed to find it. But there was a problem. They found not one, uh -oh. but three paintings. Only one of them is original. The others are just copies. Can you help the police figure out which the original painting is? It's the one with the brown frame. Take a look. All frames in the museum are made in the same style. You've got accepted to the best school of witchcraft and wizardry. One of the classes you have to attend is about transforming into animals. There are three professors who teach this class. 
Each of them specializes in transforming into a certain animal. Look at your professors and try to figure out what kind of uh -oh. animal each of them turns into. Have you noticed that the first professor has a forked tongue? He must transform into a snake. The second professor has a lion's tail. It must be the animal she transforms into. And the third professor has bear claws. He must turn into a grizzly bear. Get ready for a tough but very fun riddles competition. Yeah! Take whatever helps you activate your logical skills. A magnifying glass, a deerstalker hat, or a notebook. And let's get rolling. Let's warm up with some easy stuff. Can you find a vampire among these emojis? Here it is. Ugh, creepy. <laughs> How about this crowd of people? Can you spot a vampire hiding among them? It is this girl. Look at how sharp her teeth are. And one more riddle for you. Which of these people is a vampire? See those fang marks on the neck of that guy? He was bitten and has already turned into a vampire himself. Stephen was found unconscious in his living room on a Sunday evening. Someone had hit him on the head. The man was rushed to a hospital while the police started questioning the suspects. There were three of them, Stephen's ex-wife, his neighbor, and his younger brother. Hmm. Stephen's ex-wife said she'd been walking in the park with her little niece all day. Stephen's neighbor said she'd wanted to go on a date with her boyfriend, but since it had been raining heavily, they decided to stay at home. Yeah. And Stephen's younger brother said he'd been at work, finishing a large project. It was so important he had to work even on weekends. The police figured out who the attacker was quite fast. Can you do the same? It was Stephen's ex-wife. It had been raining heavily all day long. Who would walk in the park with a little kid in such weather? A criminal has kidnapped your friend and tied him to a tree. A huge, vicious dog is guarding this tree. You need to save your friend at night. But when you come to that place, you only have one piece of meat with you. It's not big enough to distract the dog for the three minutes you need to cut the ropes and help your friend escape. How can you solve this problem? Cut the meat into small pieces and throw them all over the garden. And while the dog is distracted, set your friend free. One day, Amy went on a date with her boyfriend, Joe, to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Joe gave her flowers and candy. They had a great meal and enjoyed the date. But in the morning, Amy woke up with a severe allergic reaction. Oh. She went to the hospital, where she was told that she had been poisoned. But to figure out what antidote Amy needed, it was crucial to understand the source of the poison. The detective invited to investigate the case questioned everyone who could poison the girl, her boyfriend, the cook, and Amy's friend Cindy. Joe said that they'd eaten the same food in the restaurant. The cook said that he had brought Amy her pizza, and it had been freshly made. And Cindy said she thought Amy's boyfriend had poisoned her. She added that he had asked her what flowers Amy liked to gain Amy's trust. Have you realized who poisoned the girl? It was Cindy. Have you noticed the book on her table? It was about poisonous flowers. She advised Joe to give Amy flowers that would cause health problems. Ah. One company organized a betting game where one red and one blue marble were placed in a dark box. If a player picked the blue marble, the company had to pay them $5,000. But if the player guessed it wrong, they had to pay the company $100. The company cheated by always putting in the box two red marbles instead of one red and one blue, but no one could prove it. Mark was observing people lose one after another. Then he took part in the game and won. How did he do it? The man picked a marble and quickly put it in his mouth without showing the thing to anyone else. The remaining marble was red 
According to the rules, it meant that Mark's marble was blue. The company had to pay him the money. Now, you need to pay attention to every little detail. Can you figure out whose dog it is? Look at that guy wearing a red jacket. See that leash he's holding? It matches the dog's collar, so most likely he's the owner. This parrot has managed to sneak away from its owner, and now the vet is looking for them. Can you say whose bird this is? The owner is that woman sitting on the couch. There's a cage behind her. Another waiting room at the vet. And whose sphinx cat is this cutie? See that guy waiting for the doctor to bring back his pet? He's surrounded by lots of furry animals and can't stop sneezing. He must be allergic to fur. That's why he got himself a sphinx kitty. And whose horse is this? See that girl standing in line? She's the only one wearing riding boots. She must be the owner. These kids seem to be terrified. No wonder. See that white rat darting around the classroom? Who does it belong to? It's that girl who's checking her backpack. You can see a cage and some rodent food inside. Ah, oh, look at this cutie. What do you think? Who does this mini pig belong to? This guy is the owner. His outfit matches the scarf the pig is wearing. How sweet is that? And whose hedgehog is this? This lady is the owner. She's wearing special gloves to handle the animal. Yes! And who does this absolutely adorable pug belong to? Its owner is this guy. If you look attentively, you'll notice a pug tattoo on his leg. Lily came home and saw her favorite vase shattered. Extremely upset, she exclaimed, What's happened to my vase? Her husband Sam explained that around lunchtime, he heard a loud crash from their bedroom. He rushed there and saw that Lily's expensive vase had been broken, and a robber was running away. Sam followed the man outside, but his glasses got foggy because of the cold weather. That's why he missed the man. Lily called the police, but after police officers heard the whole story, they refused to investigate this case. Why? Glasses fog up when you enter a warm place, not vice versa. Sam invented the story because he was afraid to admit he had been the one to break the vase. Oh. Emma's husband Liam knew his wife had been dreaming of going to an archaeological site. One day, she told him about the perfect opportunity. There was a remote site ready to be excavated, but there was no internet or network connection there. She would have to camp in a tent with almost no modern conveniences. But since she was really excited about this trip, Liam was ready to wait for her at home. Two days later, Liam received a message and a photo from Emma. The man got furious. He realized Emma had been lying about the whole thing. How did he understand it? Before leaving, Emma told her husband there was no internet connection or cell phone reception there. Then how did she manage to send him the photo? Several bank workers visited a canteen in their office building. Since it was the riddle day, Matthew, Isaac, and Wyatt were served tea, and Hunter, Christian, and Nathan drank coffee. What drink did Aaron get? Aaron drank tea simply because of his double-letter name. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. <clears throat> I was hitchhiking when a car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. 
When I regained consciousness, I found out he had taken all my money and smartphone. I only remember that the guy had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. Soon the police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe, but this man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago. And since then, the car had been parked near the cafe, but the detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Isabella is standing behind Mia, but at the same time, Mia is also standing behind Isabella. How is it possible? The girls are standing with their backs turned toward each other. Mrs. Red was a big boss in a large company. Recently, she hired a few new employees. One day, her assistant was filling out their documents and found something strange. What? She informed Mrs. Red that one of the new employees seemed to have fake documents. But the boss was in a hurry and told the assistant that she'd have a look at the papers the next day. Yeah. But the next day, Mrs. Red found out that her assistant was in a hospital, unconscious. Oh my God. Someone had attacked her on her way to work. Mrs. Red hurried to check the new employee's documents, look at them and try to figure out which ID is fake. This ID card claims that Edward is 34 years old, but the man using this document is way older. Oh. It was an extremely hot day. Police officer Black was driving along a countryside road. Suddenly, he noticed a hitchhiker on the side of the road and stopped to give him a ride. The man explained that he had been waiting for someone to pick him up for more than two hours and offered the officer some ice cream. Black refused and asked the guy about a gang of criminals who had just robbed a jewelry store. The hitchhiker exclaimed, I've just seen a red car speeding past me. Must have been the robbers, but they were driving in the opposite direction. We'll need to turn back. Black didn't believe him and took him to the police station. How did the police officer guess the hitchhiker was a criminal? If the hitchhiker had indeed been standing on the side of the road for two hours, the ice cream would have already melted. So, he lied to lead Black the wrong way. Oliver has in mind one of three numbers. One, two, or three. Charlotte is allowed to ask him just one question to figure out which number it is. Oliver can answer her question only with no, yes, and I can't say. Which question should Charlotte ask? She can say, I have the number one or two in mind. Is your number larger than my number? If Oliver answers yes, it means he's chosen three. If he answers, I can't say, the number he has in mind is two. And if he says no, his number is one. Several people were asked to step over a pencil lying on the floor, but none of them managed to do it. Why? The pencil was placed near the wall. Who doesn't like Rebus puzzles? They're fun, and I've got a few tricky ones for you. Enjoy! What does it mean? It's misunderstood. Try to crack this one. So we see pot and eight O's. Together, they make potatoes. And how about this one? That's high five. A small hint. The arrangement of these letters is important. This rebus means, hurry up! And one more puzzle for you. What could it mean? It 
It's a friend in need. A hungry vampire is following you on a deserted street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door open and hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter, but is patiently waiting outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three tunnels leading out of the house. But inside the first tunnel, there is molten lava. The walls of the second tunnel keep closing every 10 seconds, crushing everything that gets inside. And the floorboards of the third tunnel collapse every 5 seconds, sending everything lying on them into an abyss. What should you do? Just wait till the morning. Vampires can't stand daylight and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. Yes! Tyson was thinking about buying a gym membership. There were only three gyms in the area where he lived. The first one was called Iron Muscles Gym, the second one was called Stronger You Gym, and the third one was called Fit for Life Gym. Now take a look inside all of them. Which one should he choose? You see the clean towels wardrobe inside the Stronger You Gym? They don't look clean at all. It's not the best option unless he loves germs. And take a closer look at the running mill inside the Fit for Life Gym. It's broken. That's an accident waiting to happen. So he should pick the Iron Muscles Gym. Ellie and Ollie were looking for a nice hotel to spend their vacation together with their puppy. After checking out some places online, they brought down their options to three. Take a look at the website of each of them. Which one should they pick? Do you notice the small stock photo sign on the photos of the first hotel's website? That can only mean they are scamming people. Mm. The second hotel seems like a good option since it's a five-star one. But do you see the small sign on the website that says, no pets allowed? Ah. They can't go there with their puppy. So they should stay at the third hotel. James and Jonathan went camping in the woods. As they were searching for the perfect place to set their tents, they came across a river that only had one bridge to cross to the other side. However, as soon as they stepped on it, a troll appeared in front of them and said, I'll only let you pass if you answer my riddle. Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. What am I? The answer is time. Hillary was sitting in her hotel room when someone knocked on her door. She opened it and saw a man whom she had never seen before. He said, Oh, I'm sorry. I have made a mistake. I thought this was my room. He then walked back to the elevator. Hillary immediately locked the door after him and called hotel security. What do you think made her so suspicious? Nobody knocks on their own hotel door, but the man did that. Captain Bluebeard was traveling the sea with his crew. At one time during their voyage, two of his sailors were standing on opposite sides of the ship. One of them was looking west, and the other one was looking east. But at the same time, they could see each other clearly as well. How was that possible? The sailors had their backs against either ends of the ship. Newton and Curie were two history professors from Planet Q. To complete their Planet Earth research, they had to explore a place the Earthlings used to call a school. There, they found a piece of paper with a handwritten number on it, but couldn't come to an agreement about what the number was. Newton was saying it was six, and Curie was saying it was nine. Who was correct? Do you see this teeny tiny dot here? That can only mean the number is nine. So, Curie is right. Yeah. The Foggy Mountains region of the Kingdom of Endolia was occupied by the most vicious dragon. The king called Knight Samuel to go on a quest to defeat it and take all the gold it stole from the people back. Yeah. So, Knight Samuel hopped on his horse and reached the mountains after a long journey. Once the dragon saw him, it said if Knight Samuel knew all three of its riddles correctly, it would leave the mountains as well as all the gold. The first one was, Soft and fragile is my skin, I get my growth in mud. 
I'm dangerous as much as pretty, for if not careful, I draw blood. What am I? It's a thorn. You're a clever one, Knight Samuel, the dragon said. Here's my second riddle. I am a box that holds keys without locks, yet they can unlock your soul. What am I? The answer is a piano. I have only one riddle left for you, but be very careful. If you can't answer it correctly, this kingdom shall be mine. When you went into the woods, you got me. You hated me, yet you wanted to find me. You went home with me because you couldn't find me. What was it? The answer is a splinter. Annie forgot her computer in her dorm room, but she urgently needed to use one to submit her school paper. Her mom had a laptop in the study room, but it was password protected. However, she was easily able to figure out the password. How did she do it? Take a closer look at the bookcase inside the room. Some of the books have letters instead of their titles on the side labels. This book has the letter A, this one has N, another N here, there's an I on this book's label, and this one has an E. So the password is Annie. Whoa. Professor Guillermo was the headmaster of the Academy for Superheroes. He was also responsible for holding examinations to select new students for the Academy. There were only three students left who successfully made it to the last part of this year's exam. To pass it, they all needed to show Professor Guillermo their special power. The first student's power was going invisible. The second student could make objects fly. And the third student could bend metal with her mind. However, Professor Guillermo realized that one of them was an imposter. Which one is it? Take a closer look at the object that the second student is levitating. Do you see the small on-off button here? That can only mean it's actually some tech device that can fly on its own. So he is the imposter. Jane was competing at who wants to be a billionaire? And she was only one question away from the billion dollar prize. The question was, it's true, I bring serenity and hang around the stars, but yet I live in misery, you'll find me behind bars. With thieves and villains I consort, in prison I'll be found, but I would never go to court unless there's more than one. What am I? It's the letter S. Dylan was going to buy a new car. The salesman showed him three options. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the side door of the first car. The paint on here is chipped. It's not wise to get a car that's already damaged. Hmm. The third car's left tire rim is cracked. This one is also a pass. Hmm. So he should get the second car. Oh, yeah. Catherine has four daughters and each of her daughters has a brother. How many children in total does Catherine have? Each daughter has the one and the same brother, so she has five kids. Rachel and Ashley were best friends, but one of them was living in Japan, and the other in the United States. Rachel had purchased a BFF bracelet for Ashley and wanted to mail it to her. However, the only way to make sure the bracelet would be received was to place a lock on the package. Rachel had locks and Ashley had locks, but neither had keys for each other's locks. How can they ensure the bracelet isn't stolen? Rachel should place a lock on the package and send it to Ashley. Ashley then should place one of her locks on the package and send it back to Rachel. Rachel removes her lock and sends the package back to Ashley. Marla goes to the grocery store and buys one dozen eggs. As she's going home, all but three eggs break. How many eggs are left unbroken? The answer is hidden in the question. She has three eggs left. 
Let's spend the next 10 minutes or so on a nice and refreshing brain workout, shall we? Ready? Go! There are some flowers growing in the field and some bees flying over them. How many flowers and bees are there if both of the following statements are true? If all the bees land on all the flowers, one bee for a flower, one bee won't get a flower. If every two bees decide to share a flower, one flower will be left without a bee. If you answered that there were four bees and three flowers, you're absolutely right. Anna majored in accounting at university. Her roommates wanted to test her intelligence. They took three envelopes and wrote some messages on them. Then they put the answers to Anna's exam questions in one of the envelopes. Only one envelope had a truthful message written on it. The other two were false. Anna wasn't allowed to open the envelopes and could only pick one. The first message read, there are no exam answers here. The second one was, the exam answers are here. And the third message read, the exam answers aren't in the second envelope. Which envelope should Anna pick? The third one, it tells the truth, which means the exam answers are in the first envelope. A businessman was about to go through a security check at the airport when he realized someone had taken his luggage. The airport police had three suspects. Lisa said, I wouldn't take someone's old brown bag. I have my own. Hmm. Mike explained, he was a light traveler and didn't have luggage. He put everything in his backpack. Rob had a broken arm and a sprained ankle. He could hardly carry anything. The police immediately knew who had done it. Can you figure it out? It was Lisa. Nobody told her the luggage was brown. Ah. One day, Detective Morris was patrolling a local park. As soon as he entered it, he saw several bags with sand. He kept walking and soon came across a picnic basket and binoculars. A few feet further, he saw some items of clothing and a large colorful sheet. There was also an unconscious man lying on the ground. The detective immediately figured out what had happened. Can you? The man was flying in a hot air balloon. When it started to lose altitude, he tried to make the balloon lighter, but his attempt was unsuccessful. When several friends decided to play cards, they noticed that a few cards had been lost. But they found out that if they dealt the rest of the cards among four people, three cards would remain. If they dealt these cards between three people, two cards would remain. And if they distributed the cards among five people, again, two cards would remain. How many cards were left in the pack? There were 47 cards left in the pack. Let's see. If 47 is divided by 4, 3 is left out. And if 47 is divided by either 3 or 5, 2 is left out. Scott and Mary were on vacation. One day, Mary told Scott she couldn't go to the beach with him because she was feeling unwell. When Scott came back to the room to grab his phone, Mary was gone. Oh. He found her by the pool and asked, Are you alone here? She nodded, but Scott immediately realized she was lying. How? There were two drinks on her table and two fruit platters. And now, I've got probably one of the coolest tasks for you. Yeah. I'll show you different products, and you'll need to figure out if they're real products or cakes. Let's start. It looks like a regular bag of Doritos. Can it be anything else? Look at that. It's a cake. Here is a pretty normal cheeseburger, I would say. But what secret is it hiding? It's cake again. Wow, I'd love to try it. Oh, a tube of toothpaste. Can it be cake too? Ah, 
Ah, no, just some regular toothpaste. Thought so. And some good old toilet paper, right? No, you must be kidding me. It looks so realistic. Mmm, a corn cob. Yummy. It looks delicious, but can it be a cake? Oh my, it is! I'm not sure what I'd prefer now, though. A cake or some sweet corn? How about this sneaker? Is it real or edible? And again, it's a cake. How is it even possible? Ooh, my God. Now, it must be an orange, right? There's no way it can be a cake. It just looks too realistic. And indeed, it's a real fruit. An eggplant or a cake shaped like an eggplant? That's the question. Oh, I see. It's the real thing. Okay, what have we got here? A banana. A pretty realistic banana if you ask me. Can it be a cake? Apparently, the answer is yes, it can. Wow. How about this cup of coffee with milk? I can't believe my eyes. It's a cake. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God. And the last one, the toughest. Is it a clock or a cake? I mean, I'm almost sure it's a real clock, but you never know. It's a cake. Wow, this task has blown my mind. But back to our detective riddles. Amy won $20 million in the lottery. The night after she received the money, she stayed at the most expensive hotel and made a video. It was about her life and how she hadn't seen her sister since childhood. The next day, three girls showed up claiming to be her sister. All of them looked so much alike, but which one tells the truth? It's the lady on the right. She has the same mole as Amy on her cheek, a tattoo with the letter A, and a tattoo with two girls holding hands. Mrs. Kim called the school principal to report someone had taken her student's test. She added that she had noticed a stranger wearing school clothes, gloves, and a red mask. This person also had three star tattoos on their fingers. The principal didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves, but then how did she see three star tattoos on the intruder's fingers? Ah. Two friends, Mark and Timothy, were walking home from the supermarket with their purchases. That was the last week before the winter holidays, so they had a lot of bags. Mark kept complaining about how heavy his bags were. Then Timothy told him, I don't understand what you're upset about. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice as many bags as you. And if I gave you one of my bags, we would have the same number. How many bags were the guys carrying? Timothy had seven bags, while Mark was goofing off and carrying only five bags. The art museum owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. A worker grabbed it and ran away. The museum owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone trying to get electricity for the site as there was none. The manager told the police he had been teaching his staff to work as a team. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a broken lamp. The detectives immediately figured out who was lying. Can you?
It was the electrician. There was no electricity at the construction site. Oh, no. Soon after Bob became prom king, he vanished. His teachers were looking for him everywhere. Ah. They believed there were three people who could be behind his disappearance. Bob's rival Joe said he had been dancing all night with his girlfriend and hadn't seen Bob. Bob's classmate Dennis claimed he hadn't been feeling so well, so he spent all night in the lounge. Laura, Bob's secret admirer, said she had been counting the votes. The teachers immediately realized who knew something about Bob's disappearance. And have you figured it out? It was Laura. Bob had already become prom king. She didn't need to count the votes.